All right, so Gene, we've talked about in the past, we want to do some horror stories. So yes. you have some fantastic stories from your years of experience. So what is a horror story that you can tell us? Yeah, I think uh, the category of horror stories that we're going to be talking about are specifically the ways that security and compliance managers uh, get ambushed from everybody else in the process, you know, as they are trying to uh, build and maintain the compliance program. I think the, the first, um, it's not really a horror story, it's sort of a fact of life, um, but which, of which many of these derive from, is that information security is often organized in a way that uh, keeps it from interfering with everyone else's real work, right? So uh, that means that, you know, they're not really a part of the application development process, they're not part of the IT operations group, uh, they're not even part of the internal audit group, right? So it basically means that uh, information security has to sort of um, uh, worm their way into everybody else's process, whether they want them or not, right? So I think in my view, you know, uh, there's a spectrum of information security practitioners. On the one extreme, you have people who are viewed as the shrill, hysterical people who are focused on technical minutia that guarantees that work never gets done because they're creating bureaucracies, right? And when you see them in the hallway, they run the other way, right? So that's, uh, that's one extreme. And the other extreme that we want to get to is, uh, you know, where information security is viewed as uh, adding value and helping every other organization achieve their goals. And no one will have an important meeting uh, to make important decisions without information security being there. So what we want to do is talk about the you know, ways that we can get from, you know, the marginalized information security group to the one that's fully integrated in daily operations. So now, what's a what's a specific story of somebody that you've worked with or talked to about uh, how they do get ambushed or how they're not part of the fold and it really affects the organization? Right. I think uh, you know one of the I think the most painful example is when uh, the information security or compliance manager is uh, responsible for say hundreds of controls you know, owned by hundreds of control owners and they're all saying, uh, Matt. Good to go, right? Uh, you know, the controls in my area of operations are just all condition green, right? Green, 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 until three weeks before the auditors show up, you know, everything goes to hell in the handbasket. They're like, oh my god, right? The controls aren't there, you know, the tests are failing, uh, I need your help, right? And so, uh, you know, because information security is often, well, can, because information security, uh, sometimes has to rely on you know, the honor system of the control owners. This is where information security is often the uh, bearer of bad news, right? And unfortunately, the person responsible you know, uh, for uh, apologizing when the auditors show up and, and basically owning the failure, right? even though uh, it wasn't exactly their fault. Okay. So now, what is a, what's an example of somebody you've worked with, not a, not an auto horror story maybe, but somebody that does this well, that is in the fold and is your kind of best practice? Right, and so the opposite of uh, relying on, you know, uh, people saying, Gene, the controls that I own, you know, are uh, good to go, trust me, you know, when the auto show up, I don't think we're going to have a problem, right, and not only relying on that person's uh, mood or, uh, you know, uh, priorities. The opposite of that is you know, having automated controls in place uh, that security help define and being able to run tests on demand right, to show that the controls are operating as designed. Right, so at this point, now you're not, uh, you don't have to make a phone call. Uh, you don't have to trust that the control owner or the manager you know, uh, uh, is doing what they promised. Now we have actual control in the system that can generate a report and say, hey, you know, uh, the control uh, is effective, is operating as designed, right, just like it was yesterday and the day before. So now, Gene, how many people are... So, Gene, how many people are actually at that best practices into the spectrum versus... I mean, you talk to a lot of CISOs. Yeah. You do consulting work. You yeah. do lots of different things. Or right. Consulting work, I guess. You go out and engage with lots of people. Yeah, yeah. So, um, how many people are on the high end of that spectrum versus how many people do you talk to are, are in need of help? Right. You know, uh, this question came up in the uh, security metrics panel. When we benchmarked you know, 1,500 IT organizations, you know, we can actually cluster them pretty well into one of three categories, high, medium, and low. And the high performers you know, were about 5% of the population. And uh, the you know, rest were evenly split between medium and low. I think that's the way it is right now for uh, uh, most compliance programs uh, because in actuality I think most uh, organizations are just struggling to uh, make the date 
right? And uh, they'll do whatever it takes, right, to, to pass, right? And usually that is just the outcome of a project. What they're not doing is building the ongoing procedures and processes that you can rely on, you know, in the following years to bring the cost of compliance down. So, uh, you know, I think the best indicator is, you know, are you spending less and less money and effort on compliance? And I would say probably 50, 70 percent of organizations are not, right? They're still trying to get to compliance as opposed to trying to figure out how to reduce the cost of compliance.